Hi, welcome to the show. So when it comes to uh, Linux uh, kernel interfaces, uh, there are uh, different uh, ways you can communicate uh, from user space to the kernel space. And uh, uh, one of the methods I have even uh, covered quite extensively is the PROC uh, file system. Uh, this I have done uh, quite uh, long back, I think some couple of years back. So if you are interested, you can anyway watch this episode uh, because it is in relationship with this episode which in which we are going to discuss about this uh, uh, you know gpio pins the access via direct linux kernel you know from the user space uh, any beginner may think uh, raspberry pi uh, i mean using any raspberry pi it's all about learning python or uh, you know uh, some uh, language like that let me just pick this and i can show you guys what i have come up with okay See, uh, I just, uh, you know, this is my uh, Raspberry Pi, hope you can see there. Uh, I removed its uh, lid so that I can, uh, you know, connect this uh, jumper uh, cables and then I can connect it to this uh, breadboard and, uh, you know, I have uh, connected a small LED. Okay, so we can uh, test uh, the GPI pins via this arrangement. Uh, uh, the intent is not to turn on LED or any gadgets. The intent is about how uh, you can interface, um, I mean, how you can learn about how the, you know, uh, the kernel accesses this GPIO pins uh, obviously with some type of you know drivers okay so uh, although uh, I can go in depth about the drivers but I don't want to get very much in depth in this episode so we can superficially see how you can uh, do some sort of a raw access okay uh, yeah that's what any beginner uh, they may uh, think uh, you know using any IOT or something like that or something like this it's all about you learn some uh, you know Perl or uh, uh, python uh, uh, commands and then you access uh, through that uh, you know code uh, you know uh, or c++ or c apis and stuff so that is one way to do that but in the end it always happens with the standard interface which it provides okay in this case it provides uh, via sys file system it is not proc file system there are different interfaces see uh, kernel you can access with some drivers of course character drivers and stuff like that uh, if not you can access the kernel uh, via this proc file system uh, if not proc file system you can access uh, through sys file system or iocTL uh, or io control apis and you know stuff like that and if you go to some wiki about storage or file system architecture uh, linux uh, file system uh, if you type you will get some type of architecture okay in uh, wikipedia uh, i often uh, uh, take this as an example even when i uh, you know handle any sessions uh, with my uh, students okay so let's just search that image uh, wiki area uh, yes yeah this is the one okay so if you go inside what you can uh, find is as you can see here this is the wiki uh, link i can even attach this link in the video description uh, you can open this image and uh, this gives a fair idea of the architecture of the file system access you can see there you have this uh, various file systems uh, and then you have this network file system and then this pseudo file system where this is where the kernel is providing an illusionary file system uh, vi vfs uh, which is the virtual file system again this is something extensively i have discussed uh, in the past okay uh, uh, file system subsystem the linux channel yes so you can go to this page and i have covered a few episodes on this regard also i mentioned uh, i mean also i shot a video episode on the role of vfs and stuff so you can read this i mean you can go through these episodes you can go through this uh, proc file system and as well i have done some episodes on iocTL as also because that is also you know uh, uh, is one of the you know standard interfaces with which you can uh, communicate the kernel okay so 
coming down uh, uh, i mean coming back to this image you can see there in that they have listed the proc file system sysfs and uh, stuff like that and even they mentioned this pipe fs and stuff i'm not a big fan of pipes and uh, stuff i feel it is kind of uh, an old outdated approach okay so i i do use sysfs if there are i mean i i need to use sysfs in a case like this but if i code like i mentioned in my episode i generally use a proc file system in fact i was uh, I am a big fan of proc file system. I don't like much any other type of kernel interfaces. Let it be IOCTLs and uh, you know uh, stuff like that. Of course, some people call, by the way, this IOCTL, uh, IO control uh, APIs as IOCTL. Uh, some call as IO control. Okay, so it's just those APIs. Okay, you will find often uh, they are like a get set APIs. Uh, through IO control, you can get uh, any kernel uh, parameters or variables of any, uh, say for instance. Uh, uh, network ports and uh, stuff like that let it be empty or uh, hardware address like ethernet address and stuff like that okay so same thing if you come here these are the various uh, you know file systems uh, you can see that these are uh, classified as pseudo file system uh, versus uh, these are classified as the standard file system eventually it is also nothing but a drama on top of the block level uh, you know access you can see there you have this block layer so whole block layer is abstracted with the you know file system concept in the end there is no thing called as file systems it is just again a illusionary thing okay so you can see there below is the block layer and below you can find the actual drivers you can find here you have the drivers for hard disk and uh, whatever that uh, you know bus architecture is so you can see there's SCSI low level drivers and stuff like that so of course uh, you will find all this drivers let it be floppy usb drive cd drive whatever it is you know it's just abstracted you know with all these layers and then you can see the files in the user space so whenever you go to the user space and do any ls command what you get is just the drama which is presented by linux kernel okay so same way uh, what we do is uh, we can connect raspberry pi uh, before that we can also search uh, raspberry pi uh, you know python code for led something see as you can see there it is auto completing uh, you can see any such examples uh, any anything we can pick randomly so you, you can go there uh, they have provided uh, an example circuit like this and then uh, you can see there uh, this is the python code and you do this the thing is whatever you do via python whatever you do in c++ c whatever it is it goes through this interfaces below okay which is why we are going to the source of that uh, whole you know interface okay so technically what happens is uh, you can just you know put your uh, uh, uh you know let's just uh, you know put this uh, architecture we have this linux kernel okay which is uh, running on the raspberry pi via this raspbian os because the os is nothing but a kernel uh, linux distribution the distribution we call as raspbian os uh, inside we have nothing but linux kernel okay so in that you can see there you can find obviously uh, these uh, gpio drivers okay so you have this uh, gpio drivers and these drivers is exposing to the user space uh, via those uh, you know whatever i mentioned those uh, sysfs via that uh, sysfs okay this is uh, you know via sysfs okay so this is the architecture okay so in user space if you use any python uh, you will find uh, various uh, libraries and then you will write your python code okay and you will access with python apis but end of the day you don't need any apis any language or anything you can directly access uh, through command line uh, you know uh, bash scripts directly okay so same thing happens if you use uh, you know any c or c plus plus just it's just all using this you know these respective libraries okay uh, <laughs> uh, all right yes okay it's just using this uh, you know libraries so same thing you can also find uh, instead of this let's say we search a c code for led you will find uh, some respective you know um, thing uh, you may need to include some header files and then you will get that access the header files of course we include uh, to get that uh, you know uh, libraries 
supported okay so we can see what is the code yeah you can see their wiring uh, pi dot h and then uh, they are using digital write and all that so this is what happens but end of the day it's all abstraction okay what you are seeing is a you know illusionary stuff it's all abstracted uh, you know with with those libraries okay so the libraries are abstracting and so you are getting this type of interface but in our case we are going to the root which is uh, the actual source so what i do is i can uh, quickly uh, power up this thing and then we can access uh, we can do an ssh and then we can directly access the raspberry pi and then we can uh, you know uh, uh, you know set the parameters and activate those uh, you know gpio pins in this case what i have done is i have uh, connected to gpio 11 and next to that you have this uh, ground so these two i have tapped and then i connected to this uh, you know breadboard i just uh, connected some bunch of uh, resistors this is an rgb led module so it's a module it's not just not led alone uh, hope i can uh, zoom this camera okay uh, if you can uh, see here yes so hope you can see there uh, it's a small uh, module okay it's a small module and all this uh, rgb i have connected to all positive ones uh, positive leads and there is a common uh, ground you can see that this is the common ground uh, to the common ground i am tapping this you know uh, ground wire so that's it so uh, what we do is we can uh, power up this uh, pi and uh, we can uh, start the demo yeah, uh, let me connect this power source and uh, let me connect one uh, network cable to this port. Uh, it is actually going to connect with the Wi-Fi as well. Uh, I'm just connecting it because I'm not sure which is that, uh, you know, port address is. So I assume, I, I know what address it may connect because earlier I was uh, playing around. So let me just ping to this address hope it you know connects yeah as you can see i'm getting a successful ping i am still not sure is this the ip address uh, which it is currently being on to. okay uh, ssh pi at uh, 192 168 0.153 yep as you can see it is yes so we can able to log in uh, which means uh, it is the one uh, what we do is uh, we can go to this uh, proc file system i mean proc folder and you can see you have this uh, standard uh, you know uh, uh, you know files in and folders in the proc folder so this is what is represented in this you know picture see there in this picture the proc is this pseudo file system and whenever you do this you get this illusionary stuff in fact you can check a ps minus af and you will see there the files are you know uh, i'm sorry not ps minus af you can see ls minus lh and you can see many of these are all these files are zero sized files because these are not any actual files at all okay uh, these are pseudo files so you can see their cpu info but we do this cat cpu info we should get this uh, you know uh, cpu info okay of course you can also type this command called ls cpu and it is going to you know crunch all those things into a single output versus in proc cpu info it is going to show uh, per core uh, you know details so same way you can see there the model name and all this stuff it shows uh, uh, in the cpu info but if you do ls minus ls 